Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome uh, to the uh, usual show, the Cricket Happening Show with your host Ram today and uh, well on this Cricket Happening Show, well we have lots of cricket, uh, yesterday we didn't have any cricket and uh, today also there's not a uh, play but uh, well definitely have three matches uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, one is uh, we are going to have a look uh, at the uh, at the Tendulkar uh, test series I would say because there are only two test matches which are going to be played uh, as he's going to be the prime focus. Uh, India versus uh, West Indies. The first test match is kicking off tomorrow at Eden Gardens in Kolkata and I'm sure it is going to be a jam-packed crowd because uh, what is going to happen is uh, they are probably going to, the crowd is probably going to assume uh, that uh, India is going to bat first and so they would like to have a glimpse of Tendulkar, no doubt about it, whether if it is in only in the first innings, second innings, whatever the case may be, everybody would like to have uh, a, a glance at Tendulkar because they know for a fact that uh, Tendulkar is not going to be around after two test matches. Well, so that is something that I will be looking at. So I will be doing a brief preview of the first te test match uh, between India and West Indies which is going to be played at Aden Gardens in Kolkata. And then uh, we have one more uh, match with the third one-day international which is coming up in the Pakistan South African one-day series is assuming a lot of significance in the United Arab Emirates as it is going uh, close, uh, pretty close, uh, neck to neck here. Uh, right now the series stands at one all and the third one-day international is up for grabs for both the teams, Sri Lanka, Australia, sorry, uh, South Africa versus Pakistan in Abu Dhabi. And then, uh, as you know, New Zealand are still hunting for a victory after uh, coming to Bangladesh. Uh, they are really, really searching for the thing for a solitary uh, win here because in the test matches they lost they lost into the uh, one day series uh, as well I mean in the sense that they lost the one day series they were dropped there was a Bangla watch 3 nil, and now they are looking out for that solitary win against uh, Bangladesh um, I mean uh, they are just going to look out for a solitary win and that solitary win uh, could be achieved for them in the T20 but uh, Bangladesh uh, let me tell you that uh, Bangladesh are not having a very good record as far as T20 goes so it is, uh, and this is something uh, which would be great preparation for them considering the fact that Bangladesh are the hosts uh, for the 2020 World Cup uh, which is coming up. So uh, I'm sure uh, Bangladesh are going to put their foot forward, they're going to put their, and I, I, I have a feeling that uh, this Bangladesh outfit is really, really looking uh, like, you know, they won't allow New Zealand to even win because uh, they, they have all the wherewithal uh, to deliver the goods. Well, but only time is uh, really, really going to be uh, the uh, the story the storyteller here. So let's uh, first look at the very very uh, important uh, West, uh, India West Indies two test series which is coming up. And as I said, the prime focus once again. I've already spoken about it, but I don't uh, tire of speaking about this phenomenal person, the person who has all the records to his name. He owns all the cricketing records as far as batting is concerned, and that person is Sachin Tendulkar. Prime focus will be on Sachin Tendulkar, no doubt about that. So let's uh, shift uh, gears from here because Sachin Tendulkar is going to be the prime focus, there's no doubt about it. According to me, I'm terming this as the Tendulkar Test Series because only two test matches are going to be played. Uh, India, well, looking in very good form. Uh, they are done well against Australia and uh, they are looking uh, pretty good. Shikhar Dhawan uh, already totted up four one-day international centuries in his uh, short uh, test career here uh, and uh, he's, uh, he's looking pretty good. Uh, so Shikha Devan will probably will be opening with Murli Vijay, one has to wait and see uh, whether Murli Vijay is a Murli Vijay, unfortunately uh, we have seen that uh, he has been uh, not really uh, getting that uh, real form that Vijay is capable of, so Murli Vijay would like to do something here, we are only talking about the probables here, uh, Murli Vijay whether he is going to play or whether Rohit Sharma is also going to get the nod or whether it is going to be Ajinkya Rahani who is going to be given an opportunity. Uh, Chiteshwar Pujara, well, he's an automatic inclusion. Dust matches are his cup of tea. Uh, he's technically absolutely perfect, uh, absolutely technically perfect because I think that after uh, India's uh, Sanjay Manjrekar, who, was, uh, who is now, nowadays a cricket commentator, uh, I feel the technical perfection, one can see it in Chiteshwar Pujara. Uh, Sajin Tendulkar, well, already, I mean, every time I, I feel like talking about this person, Sajin Tendulkar, because I know I'm not going to have an opportunity uh, to talk about Sajin Tendulkar after two test matches uh, as far as his batting exploits are concerned. Uh, Virat Kohli is absolutely pink form. Uh, he should be somebody which would West Indies will be absolutely dreading. There's no doubt about it. His batting lineup is looking absolutely strong on paper. No doubt about it. I'm sure they're going to uh, not only be on paper, they're not going to be the paper tigers and, in, and especially considering the fact that uh, this test series is going to be played in India. 
I think India are absolutely in that sense. I wouldn't say favourites because West Indies are also a very good outfit. Uh, I'll come back to that later. Dhoni, the captain, always uh, leading by example, uh, and the bowling. The bowling is something uh, that uh, even though I mean I'm I'm really looking forward to Mohammad Shami uh, bowling in Test matches with uh, two slips and the gully or three slips and the gully as Dhoni would provide him because I feel he is a person who is not only having the pace, not only having the bounce, also moving the ball both ways. And the, and and this uh, special um, uh, ball is his inducker, which comes in uh, and uh, really takes the bat and bat the batsman by surprise. Because we saw that in the One Day International against Australia, uh, he can really get that going uh, with lots of pace. And uh, before the batsman could even think uh, that the ball could uh, come and hit the pads, and uh, up up would go the umpire's finger. So that would be very interesting. And he also uh, swings the ball both ways. Bhuvneshwar Kumar should be an ideal. Uh, able foil for him. He always likes the new cherry uh, and Bhuvneshwar Kumar would like to give the breakthrough for India as quickly as possible. Um, uh, so it's all, all a matter of youngsters actually now because there's no experienced pace bowler other than Ishan Sharma. But Ishan Sharma uh, would be playing that's left to, a, uh, that's left, left to a, a sort of a question mark there uh, hangs on that. And as far as spinning is spin spinners are concerned which is what India would be uh, really uh, uh, doing. They have Ravi Chandra and Ashwin. They are the, these are the ones, uh, these are the spinners who are the uh, genuine test spinners. Ravi Chandra and Ashwin, you know what a wonderful baller he is. And Pragyan Ujjala, the left arm spinner, also uh, is a perfect uh, test material. So, all in all, um, India looks absolutely geared up. Uh, I mean, there's going to be played at Eden Gardens in Kolkata. I'm sure that there's going to be uh, some uh, uh, some sort of bounce. The Prabir Mukherjee, the Eden Gardens uh, groundsman, has said that there's going to be even bounce on this pitch and uh, there's not going to be any rain so basically we are going to have uh, very nice temperatures there uh, at the Eden Gardens in Kolkata and I'm sure we are going to have a full five days play around uh, no doubt about that. So let's talk about the West Indies. Now West Indies let me tell you uh, they have good uh, knowledge about the Indian conditions they have already mentioned that uh, and uh, they know that their spinners uh, have also got um, uh, good knowledge because they played India A, so they they know what to expect in India. And uh, there are a lot of spinners who have actually played, like Virsami Permal, uh, who has played here, Narsing Dinarain. These are the spinners. Now, uh, spin is not something that India can resort to. Uh, Shane Schillingford is a much improved spin bowler. Uh, and as I said, uh, they definitely have good knowledge of the Indian conditions. So uh, that is not something. And I'm sure uh, we, we are going to see how West Indies are going to shape up. Uh, they are definitely. Uh, going to be, uh, and in my opinion, they are definitely going to tackle spin well uh, this time around, I suppose. Uh, let's look at the West Indies batting card here. The West Indies batting card leads, uh, lo looks pretty pretty powerful. Chris Gale, uh, he would be opening the innings along with Kiran Powell, who normally is a very, very uh, compact batsman. He's been doing well too. Chris Gale, as you know, he, it doesn't matter whether it is test matches or one-day internationals or T20s. He just goes about uh, in his own way, and that is to bang the ball. And he also has can play the waiting game uh, to perfection. And then uh, we have Darren Bravo, who is an exciting one. had a, a wonderful uh, series against India, uh, when India last played against the West Indies. So Darren Bravo looking forward there, and he's one of those uh, classical players in the mold of uh, Brian Lara. Uh, Marlon Sam, as you know, what a wonderful player he is. He's one of those uh, very, very talented blokes in the West Indies cricket team. And, uh, well, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's just an asset to the West Indies team, because you name it batting, bowling or fielding, it comes absolutely naturally to him. Shivnara and Chandrapal. Now, Shivnara and Chandrapal, like Sajin Tendulkar, uh, even though it's not a big landmark, but still a big landmark, uh, because uh, one has to uh, really get that into focus, because uh, Tendulkar definitely playing his 199 test and uh, coming to the end of his career. But Shivnara and Chandrapal, who has been a veteran, who has been having a very, very good record against India. In fact, in his overall average, if you look at it, uh, you will you will find that Shivnara and Chandrapal has his best average against India, has scored a lot of centuries against India. And Shivnara and Chandrapal will be playing his 150th test. So that would be a great landmark for the West Indies batsman, Shivnara and Chandrapal. And he would be the rock on which the West Indies batsman would do, uh, the batting order would revolve. Because they will look forward to Shivnara and Chandrapal to stay at the crease as long as possible. If he stays, uh, he's a pretty, pretty real thorn uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the flesh, I would say. And uh, then we have... Uh, uh, Dinesh Ramdin would be doing the keeping. Darren Sami, the captain, uh, you know, as again, like uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni leads by example, uh, puts up a very, very, I mean, uh, he really leads, uh, uh, I mean, he's a real uh, all-rounder, uh, a captain all-rounder, and uh, I mean, Darren Sami 
uh, is a wonderful captain uh, according to me as far as West Indies is concerned. He's a very, very thinking captain. And the pace balling would be in the hands of uh, Kemar Roosh and Tino Best. Tino Best is one uh, who can really extract some life out of any wicket uh, because he gets the ball to bounce, he bowls a lot of pace. Kemar Roosh uh, of late uh, West Indies uh, have a very, very uh, he's a prime strike baller for, Kemar, for, for West Indies. Uh, and uh, one only wants to, one has to wait and watch uh, what uh, the pace ballers can do on Indian wicket because Indian wickets are supposed to be a pretty uh, dead tracks and uh, whether, um, you know, whether, um, but uh, we have seen in the past that Eden Gardens, Kolkata definitely affords uh, uh, some pace and bounce uh, for the uh, ballers and uh, so that would be something uh, that would be good to see. So uh, that wraps up my preview as far as uh, India and uh, Australia, uh, India and West Indies are concerned in the first test match. Uh, is going to be played at Eden Gardens in Kolkata. So I hope we have a very good game and uh, wish uh, that uh, tomorrow uh, the crowd gets an opportunity uh, to see um, Sajin Tendulkar in action pretty soon if India uh, either uh, you know win the toss and decide to bat first. I'm sure Mahindra Singh Dhoni would do it. Uh, if India win the toss, they would uh, decide to bat first. Well, so let's uh, get on from here. Uh, now we are going to do a brief preview. I said it's been Pakistan, South Africa, third one-day international which is uh, starting. As far as uh, so it's going to be pretty brief here. As far as uh, Pakistan are concerned, uh, Pakistan well uh, they have the same uh, composition. There's not much of a change as you know uh, right now. Uh, the CD stands at one all, uh, and uh, South Africa well Hashim Amla gets his place back. He has been injured, but now he's back. So that is going to really really strengthen this team no end because Hashim Amla has a good record against Pakistan too. And um, other than that, uh, well, it's, uh, it's the absolutely the same setup. There's not going to be uh, much of uh, much changes. Uh, whether Dale Steen would be getting an opportunity, that uh, remains to be seen. Uh, and meanwhile, um, there's going to be some uh, Pakistan South Africa also going to be clashing in T20s. Uh, and uh, the news um, which is coming in from Pakistan is that uh, Abdul Razak and uh, Shoaib Malik, the experienced uh, persons, uh, have been uh, selected for the T20 matches, uh, considering the fact that um, Salim Jafar, the uh, the chief uh, cricket, the cricket board uh, selector, has, uh, uh, has precisely mentioned that uh, these experienced uh, persons are required because uh, the T20 Cup uh, is uh, around the corner, and uh, he feels that uh, the experience is something uh, that would be important, and that's the precise reason. And I'm very happy for Abdul Razak. There's no double Abdul Razak, uh, one of those uh, real clean hitters, cleanest hitters of the ball in Pakistan cricket uh, coming back into the uh, Pakistan mix. Well, uh, let's get on to the other one, the final one, and that is going to be the T20 so that New Zealand are hunting for their first ever victory. They have not got a single victory on this tour of Bangladesh, and New Zealand would be hoping that the T20 would actually change their luck, and uh, probably they would have that uh, psychological edge over Bangladesh, uh, probably uh, having a feeling that, you know, Bangladesh uh, have not done so well in T20 cricket, uh, so, but New Zealand have a good record in T20 cricket and that might be something which could tip the scales in favor of New Zealand and New Zealand might uh, probably uh, get a victory under the belt but Bangladesh I know uh, for a fact that uh, uh, they are not the ones who are going to just uh, sit there and I'm sure they would like to better their T20 record and especially considering as I said uh, Bangladesh actually hosting the T20 World Cup uh, and I'm sure they are going to put the uh, I mean they are going to start in right earnest tomorrow and they are not going to allow New Zealand probably, they are going to stop New Zealand and see to it uh, that uh, they send back New Zealand home uh, without any victories under the belt. Now whether they can do that, uh, that will be seen when the only T20, there is a solitary T20 which actually ends the New Zealand tour of Bangladesh at Dhaka. So there is only one T20 which is going to be played, So, but it will be good preparation for Bangladesh for the T20 World Cup. And uh, Bangladesh, well, we could have a uh, debut for Soumya Sarkar, a batsman who could open with Shamsu Rahman who looked pretty impressive. And it's uh, one day international when he made 96. Mushfiq Rahim, you know what a what a wonderful captain he is. According to me, I think Mushfiq Rahim is one of those uh, real intelligent captains. Even I, I mean, there's not t taking credit away from Shakib Lassen. As you know, uh, Bangladesh are still missing the services of Shakib Lassen and Tami Mikbal, and still uh, they are getting into victory. So that's something pretty creditable, uh, considering that uh, both those experienced persons are still not there, and Bangladesh are still able to uh, you know steamroll the opposition. Uh, Mushfiq Rahim, the captain and the wicketkeeper of the team. Momin Oluk is another impressive um, player who can uh, really, really uh, get things going in T20 cricket. Uh, Naeem Islam is in some good form. Nasir Hussain, as I said, he's a great finisher as far as Bangladesh cricket is concerned. As far as Nasir Hussain is concerned, let me tell you, the game is not over because he can definitely, definitely take them over the line if he stays till the end. 
uh, Mahmudullah, uh, another uh, very good, uh, useful all-rounder. Uh, Soha Ghazi has already shown his capabilities not only with the ball, also the bat. And uh, you know, Mushfiqur Rahim is one person. I think the captain. Uh, I think he uses uh, uh, Soha Ghazi in a very, very judicious manner, and uh, that is uh, pretty important as far as uh, cricket is concerned. And that Mushfiqur Rahim, I thought, uh, gives a lot of confidence to Soha Ghazi by uh, using him in the in the perfect manner, and that's pretty important as far as. Uh, uh, T20 cricket is concerned. And then they have the spinners Abdul Razak, uh, Mashraf uh, Murtaza, uh, Rubel Hussain, uh, or whether it is going to be Al Hamin Hussain who would be given, given a T20 debut and has to wait and watch. Well, as far as New Zealand are concerned, uh, they, they, they too have some very good uh, batsmen. Tom Latham, well, he's a very pretty, uh, pretty aggressive player at the top of the order, uh, but uh, it's only uh, it needs to be translated uh, into, uh, into the real game here, whether he can do that tomorrow. Uh, opening with Anton Davisic uh, remains to be seen. Uh, Grant Elliott uh, he's, he's been looking good. Uh, Ross Taylor, well, coming on the heels of uh, Century right now in one-day international. Luke Ronchi uh, would strengthen the team with his batting. He would be the wicketkeeper and the batsman of the team. And he would uh, really strengthen because he'll be coming probably... He was opening the innings, as you know, in the uh, Champions Trophy uh, for New Zealand. But here, Luke Ronchi will take his position as uh, probably number four. So he will strengthen the middle order. Uh, with uh, Corey Anderson already shown glimpses and already shown uh, the potential uh, to become... Uh, uh, a regular in this New Zealand cricket team with his all-round uh, prowess. Uh, Colin Munro, uh, the other day he scored 85, so his, uh, New Zealand would definitely not leave him. They would like to keep him. Uh, and uh, he also proved that uh, he can uh, uh, play the attacking game pretty well. And then uh, they look forward to the Kyle Mills as captain. So Kyle Mills would be hoping that, you know, at least before going to New Zealand, uh, New Zealand could save some face uh, so that they, should, they could get some win. So Kyle Mills, uh, and, but I think the bowling attack, the pace bowling attack, uh, barring Tim Saudi who could be coming into the team, uh, looks uh, pretty weak, I suppose. Uh, but, uh, well, just to, one has to uh, really see what is told. But I'm a bit surprised that uh, Bangladesh uh, um, has not uh, got uh, Zia Rahman in the mix because Zia Rahman the other day, as you know, uh, briefly entered it, but I thought um, he should be an automatic inclusion as far as 320 cricket is concerned because he also uh, has, a, he has the ball at military medium pace and he keeps the ball up to the batsman. Uh, and really makes it um, uh, makes it very difficult for the batsman to score runs. So I'm a bit surprised that uh, uh, that is uh, whether there will be going to be plays for Zia Rahman because I think he's a very good T20 player because he can really really change the um, uh, the tempo absolutely quickly. Anyway, that is for Bangladesh to decide. Well, uh, this this is my take on this uh, as far as this preview is concerned. Well, on this uh, dear um, uh, on this uh, note, uh, dear fans and subscribers, uh, we are coming to an end on this uh, Cricket Happening show with uh, doing three previews. Thanks for your company and thanks for watching Cricket Happenings as always. Your host Ram will see you tomorrow. Thank you.